At 94 years young, Tao Porshan Lynch is a force to be reckoned with. In her 94 years, she has lived multiple lives and embraced magic and energy to create a life that is nothing short of spectacular. In addition to being a yoga teacher, she is also a ballroom dancer and has been an actress and a model. She is also a dedicated onophile, giving wine lectures in her area, and is a world peace activist, invited by the Dalai Lama himself to participate in the New York Peace Education Summit. She is the very essence of grace, and her dynamic life is one to aspire to. So Tao, thank you so much for meeting with us today and allowing us to interview you. It's such an honor to be here with you. Well, it's an honor for me that you would come and think I was worth that. Oh thank my you. gosh, you're amazing. So for those of you that are watching that may not know, Tao used to be a model and an actress. She is currently still teaching yoga. And would you mind if I told them how old you are? Yoga. <laughs> okay, she's 94 years old and she's still teaching yoga. She is also a ballroom dancer that competes regularly. She's also a wine connoisseur and she's a peace activist. And what she told me prior to starting this interview is that she just came off of an amazing weekend in Atlantic City where you ballroom danced. Yes? yes I did 31 dances. 31 dances. That's yes. amazing. And? I won first place in all of them. First place in all of them. So you are a force to be reckoned with. And you look amazing. You feel amazing, right? Yes, I feel good. Yeah, you feel great. So that's just, just your spirit is just incredible. So let me ask you, if you had to say what the one thing is that allows you to be so well, so fit, so vibrant and alive, what do you think it is? What do you account for your vitality? Um, I don't procrastinate for anything. If I want to do something, I feel that all the power in the universe is right inside of me. Mm. And um, I don't think anything is impossible so usually I wake up with uh, never thinking about something bad going to happen or this is wrong and that's wrong I only wake up thinking about the birds and the and nature and how beautiful it is that's wonderful so that's strange. wonderful so I am a nutritionist I think that I told you that earlier and um, so because of that and a lot of our viewers or most of our viewers are interested in nutrition I'm very curious about the way that you eat so can you tell us a little bit about your diet I heard that you're a vegetarian I, I am a vegetarian not a fanatic one mm -hmm. I am um, I eat not all the time but when, only when I'm hungry Okay, so what can you tell me what a typical day would look like for you? Well, I usually have uh, a pomplamous, um, a grapefruit mm. for at, at breakfast, and uh, fruit juice, and then um, if I remember, if I have time, I maybe have some some salad. But I'm not really uh, big on eating during the day. Okay. I eat a little uh, Indian food and I like uh, some of the Japanese foods and mm. things but um, I like mostly vegetables okay. uh, particularly green vegetables I, I really like that. So do you steam them or do you stir fry them or do you, how do you prepare them? And I, I just the ones I can I put in them in the microwave. Oh how great! <laughs> and eat them like that. Oh definitely. how great! Uh, but um, uh, I'm, I think that, um, you know, how you eat, how quickly you eat, it, and what, what you are eating are very important. It's absolutely. I, I, I really think that that's what most people just eat anything that comes into their mind. I don't think that's good for you. Well, I think that I think people and the medical establishment in general are disconnected from the idea of food being an aspect of health. I think they feel that the body is something that breaks down and it ages and there's nothing you can do, so you might as well just take medication where you and I both know that that's not true, right? That the way Absolutely. you eat. Yeah. I mean, nature is telling us that now we're getting, in a few weeks, going to be springtime. Mm. And if we look at nature, you'll find that already there's sort of like a, a fluid going up the trunk out of the earth mm. and it's starting to move out of the earth. Everything comes out of the good mother nature, mm -hmm. everything. And uh, all up the food we eat and everything. So if, if I uh, do that, you will realize that uh, suddenly our spring is here. Two trees next to each other, the first thing you will see that blossom, 
two different blossoms, mm. two different fragrances, mm. so that we can be together, we can come. And I think nature is teaching us a lesson. Oh, absolutely. To, to watch how you're eating, watch how you're, watch how you're breathing. You're big about the breath. You're, you're, yes. That's very important to you and your, your yoga teacher. So do you think that um, it's the yoga practice or it's the breathing or a combination of the two that makes a difference for your body? It, it's, it's both, actually. But, but I, do, I do practice mostly breathing. Mm. I, I don't even make it as a practice anymore. It's just a natural thing. Mm. I find that um, it takes away fear. Mm -hmm. It to uh, it, it starts, if, if you don't practice uh, the breath and you keep putting things off, everything gathers dust and it gets worse and worse. Mm -hmm. I look for the good in everything. I like that you mentioned that you feel a calm sphere because what she also told me, Tal also told me prior to this conversation is that she's going to Russia, yes? Yes. So that's a long flight, <laughs> okay? I'm leaving for <coughs> Cambodia on Thursday and it's a 15 hour flight and mm -hmm. I'm a little scared that it's such a long flight and it's amazing that you're just going to Russia, you're not, and I was going to ask you, do you ever experience fear? And if you do, oh. you don't. No, I don't believe in fear. I think there's so much to do on this earth. And um, really, just to, it, I, whatever I want to do, I feel that something inside me will take me through it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. So I don't even think about fear. I never, I never was afraid of anything. That's and, amazing. You no, know, and the first time I, I went out, I marched with Gandhi, and I saw millions of people. You went with Gandhi? Yes, 19, you hung out with Gandhi? Yeah, <laughs> she hung 1938 out with Gandhi. <laughs> or 1939. Wow. And my uncle was a friend of, of Gandhi's in uh, Pondicherry. Wow. And so it, um, I, I met there. During the war, I wasn't afraid of the bombing. I, I, I just don't really have much fear in me. That's amazing. No, it, so Tao is half French, yes? Yes. And half Indian. So yes. that's how you came to be Gandhi. Yes. yes. That's great. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that about you. No. <laughs> I thought I did my homework, but I missed that. <laughs> no, I had uh, done that. It's, well, there's so much to do in life, isn't there? There is. And so little time to do it. I have a sweet thing I'd like to share with yes, you. Yes, please. I was teaching uh, children from uh, three years old to six years old, and from seven to twelve. And uh, they've, they've been doing Kung Fu and, and uh, Tai Chi, and they were in their little suits and everything, and they wanted me to teach them yoga. So after the yoga, they said, can we sit and talk to you? Mm. And I th these little children, about 20 of them, I, I said, of course. One little girl, six years old, said to me, Tao, what are you going to do when you retire? I said, oh, I'm not going to retire. She said, oh, goody. I said, but what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to dance my way to the next planet. But she said, oh, that makes sense. I said, oh, really? She said, yes, we put a man on the moon, and by the time I reach your age, so all the stars will be filled with people, and I'd be one of them. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that sweet? That is sweet. Six, year, six years old. That is sweet. So cute. That's so cute. I. So you have reached a advanced age without any medical conditions, which I find amazing, right? You don't. Know, so only things I've done, and I've managed to break everything. I've bro <laughs> broken my bones. Okay. And and uh, things and my wrist, but actually I always managed to come through. Yeah. And uh, they've just taken out a, a rod out of mm -hmm. here that had broken. I slipped on uh, on some wet sand, and it broke and went into the bone. Wow. And but I'm fine. Yeah, you, know? you seem fine, and we yes. as your posture, uh, yoga postures are testament to you. You're physically fit, yes. and you're still very flexible.
but you have no medical conditions like heart disease or cholesterol problems or anything like that, mm -hmm. which means you don't take any medications, right? That's, okay, 94, no medications. That's almost unheard of in our society. But I also read that you don't take any vitamin supplements either. You don't well, really um, believe in taking pills. Some, something for the eyes, um, because um, at my, my eyes, I had an accident, a uh, car hit me and hit my, um, this way, mm -hmm. it hit my hearing, mm -hmm. and uh, first of all, it, uh, my, uh, my eye was operated on, and then I'm driving along with my, that little car, mm -hmm. and I'm driving along with it, and um, the, it was raining, and all the, it was going up and down like this, mm -hmm. so they did this, so I can see at night very well. Oh wow, that's so, great. Yes, and um, I knew there was, if I looked far enough within myself, there'd be some way of, of, of doing that. Yeah, you know? so you know that there's this power inside of you to heal, yes. and you just have to harness it. Yes, and it, I think it's very, it, I think people should stop a little bit on what they eat mm. and the food, really and truly. Well, we're trying. We're, try, we're, we're trying to put the word out there, but it's hard. Uh, people, people are very attached to the junk food, and you know, it's, it's a but difficult that's thing. That's the problem, really, yeah. is it. So, Tao, um, I read that you don't drink water, and that's amazing because we live in a world where everybody's mentioning you need to drink eight glasses of water a day or whatever, but you don't drink any water at all. No, I drink well, fruit juice all day long. Fruit juice that you buy in a bottle or that you make? Or no, you no, I usually um, I, I buy the fruit and squeeze it myself. Uh, sometimes I, I, I buy something if there's no place mm. and I'm thirsty, um, and I eat a lot of fruit. Yeah. Um, if my throat is dry, for instance, I put some grapes by my bed. Mm -hmm. So because that that's good and it keeps my throat nice and opened up. So juicing has basically gotten you here. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. People, yeah. I've just written something about our, the beauty of our hands mm -hmm. and our feet, and how really with our hands uh, the. Mother will cook, take her child mm -hmm. and console it or anything. Mm -hmm. Or we, after thousands of years, we do a handshake. Mm -hmm. You can feel the energy of what the person is, what they're thinking and everything. Completely. And when you hug each other. It's true. So it's all the beauty of the hands. We do a lot of things in this world mm -hmm. and feel it. And then the next part are our legs. And when I was in hospital here, and it wouldn't come up further than that. I've, I wrote about how important our legs were. Mm. That they, they took us and showed us the beauty of the world around us, otherwise we couldn't move. So true. And we don't even appreciate them. So, so true. So it's true. true, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So Tao, I read that the Dalai Lama himself asked you to participate in a peace summit. And in that peace summit you said, um, individual healing could transform international policies. Can you tell us what you mean by that and how you feel that that can happen? Well, I think really getting rid of our negative feelings and feeling the oneness with, every, with everything, with people, with nature. Um, for instance, I was teaching at Kripalu, and suddenly all my people were going like this, and I said, what are you doing? This, there's a bug, there's a bug. And I said, that little bug has been able to avoid you. Its heart is beating like yours is, so you, and you were not even able to catch it. So just let's put him outside. Mm. They thought I was a little crazy. I maybe am, um, but I feel that nature is my way of learning about life, um, the uh, trying to uh, don't when I ask someone to take a breath, nearly every time just an ordinary person goes, and actually they're they're imprisoned. Mm -hmm. But if you can feel that within you, the, all of the elements in life, we are made of the earth. Water is the blood of the earth. Mm -hmm. It flows through us and cleanses our system. After that, the sun comes and the sun draws out of the earth all of the fruits of life. 
and uh, uh, then you get up to where you you're breathing mm -hmm. and your air. So air, you need the air, and you need to open up your lungs. Mm -hmm. And just if people instead of holding like this and sitting, think inside of themselves, let them feel that as they breathe, it's like moving up the ladder of life, mm -hmm. moving up. And you, it, as you move up into it, you go past earth. Here you get to ether, mm -hmm. and you wonder. What? How do I explain ether to someone? Well, if you see the tr leaves on a tree uh, just going like that, mm -hmm. it's wind. Mm -hmm. But you, we can s see the result of the wind, but we can't see the wind. Right. And when they want to go back to my wine, when they want to know when to pick in the Bordeaux, mm -hmm. they see what's happening in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. because that wonderful wind is going to push across. Mm -hmm. That's ether. Mm -hmm. When it gets to the top, when we get up here, they talk about the thousand petal lotus. Mm -hmm. The thousand petal lotus is, is very interesting because a lotus doesn't, this flower comes not out of a clean water mm -hmm. or the sea, it comes out of the muddy depth of the lake yeah. and it rises to the surface and there's not a speck of mud on it mm -hmm. as it opens up its petal. Mm -hmm. So as we can feel this with our breath, mm -hmm. moving up throughout our body and expanding throughout our ribs and our lungs and feel this expansion there. Mm -hmm. Each time I, I, I grow a little bit, I keep my body in good shape. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do a lot of this okay. to do it, no. I just have to flow up the ladder of life mm -hmm. and I move up the ladder of life and then I expand. And whatever I need, usually the answer comes. Yeah. So as you're breathing, you create freedom in your own body. Then yes. it gives you an understanding and yes. compassion for everything around yes. you, for yes. life around you. And then therefore, you can heal friction yes. or conflict. Yes. Because if you could do it inside of you, then you could do it externally. That is one reason why I say there's nothing we cannot do. Yeah. And you are truly an example of that. How I can't tell you how honored I am that you would talk to us today, and that mm -hmm. it was so lovely to meet you. I've been following you around a little bit. Like I it just, I'm just amazed at your story. Thank so you. I thank you so so much for coming thank today. You, you are you. just beautiful. Thank you. So at the end of a video, I usually ask my viewers to participate in one practice that they can do, something that they can engage in, that they can experience themselves the benefits of trying this practice. So for you, breathing is super important. So can you show us one breathing exercise that our viewers can maybe tr practice for yes. one month so they can experience what you're experiencing? If you just put your hands like this, so the fingertips slightly touch, they're on the floating ribs. These ribs float. They mm -hmm. see how they move yeah. outwards. Now, I'm going to take a breath, and as I take a breath, I'm going to have my ribs move out like that and keep expanding, expanding, expanding till they reach behind. And this is what we want to do, get rid of the tightness of dropping down here, opening up here and see how it lifted my spine. If you yeah. see, it will lift the spine up here. Yeah. And what happens is my hands come out like that. When I exhale, exhale as slowly and sort of bring it back down. And as I exhale, it will come almost in here. It will cross inside. And then I'm not using my hands to pull my ribs apart. My ribs and my breath are opening me. Okay, so you sit tall and you yes. put your hands sit on tall. your ribs. And if, as you sit tall, look, look what happens. You can really see. As I open up here, and I, I can hold it there, just feel it there, all pure, yeah. everything pure. I'm in touch with my inner self. Then heave a sigh. A sigh. Sighing yeah. is helping people get rid of their stress. And their sadness, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And just sigh. And when you sigh, don't drop down like this. Even when you're sitting, don't try and breathe sitting like that. But try to go through each of the energy centers within our body. That's it. Actually, the two the, the uh, doctors, uh, 
use two snakes coming up, mm -hmm. opening the door Come there. <laughs> they cross over, they open the door. That came from the Brahmin priest who told, uh, what's his name, um, from uh, Greece, uh, Alexander the Great. Oh, okay. <laughs> from Alexander the Great, uh, he, he, they told him that the serpent power in the spine opened the door to cleanse everything. Mm -hmm. And as you moved up, upwards here, and they opened the door. Mm -hmm. And so this became the symbol of, of medicine. Oh, that's right, that's true. It's, you'll see it on, <laughs> you'll see it on my card, yeah. Symbol yeah. of medicine. Mm -hmm. His two snakes, they open up the this first chakra, this, mm -hmm. then up the next chakra, then up the heart chakra, then up here. Mm -hmm. And then your mind is cleared up yeah. and everything, go and know that nothing's impossible. That's great. Okay, so everybody, you, you sit up straight, hands on your ribs, yes. breathe deeply, and then sigh. And then just feel as though you're floating. Okay. And if you're with somebody, these, my hand is cold, right? No, it's not do. very warm no, at the moment. Fine. But feel there. Yeah, much warmer. Yeah. So when I, I do it, I put my hand, usually with my students, and put it here, mm -hmm. and I gather the energy up the end there. And sometimes I do this when I'm with people who, who feel a little down and mm -hmm. everything, and I just put my hand there and get the heat of my hand and pass it on. The oneness yeah. inside. I'm sure being with you is what makes them feel better. <laughs> Thank you again. This has been wonderful. Thank you.